And let's bring in Michigan Congressman Peter Meyer, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Homeland Security Committee, and Army veteran. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. You've been watching the coverage, seeing the developments. Uh, like all of our viewers, uh, the invasion about, is about as widespread and multi-pronged uh, as it could be, kind of the worst case scenario. Your reaction to what we've done so far uh, and what Putin's doing? Well, thank you. I think we we're all hoping that some of the initial efforts would be successful in deterring Vladimir Putin, but it's very clear uh, that he felt emboldened uh, by the rather tepid response from the West. Uh, and the fact that he launched that full-scale invasion is frankly proof positive that he did not see any uh, resistance, that he was willing to call the West's bluff. And so right now is the time that we have to be strong, we have to be united, and we have to unleash crippling economic and sanction costs on Russia. We can no longer afford to be tepid or weak-willed here. You know, and, and Congressman, uh, talking about the sanctions, over the last 10 years, we have levied uh, over 100 sanctions on Russia. Yeah, what they, good have they done? Right. They knew this was coming, but they still did it. And now you're calling for tougher sanctions because, to the point we've been making uh, from the couch, uh, is that they did, the sanctions thus far did not deter him. Today, we're probably going to get, see some yeah, big well, sanctions. The big sanctions probably should have come a couple of days ago. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the time to deploy that was to show that we were serious to hopefully preempt the military invasion that occurred uh, just mere hours ago. Uh, but to your point, we've been unleashing sanctions for a very long time. However, they've been measured. They have been calculated to do minimal uh, economic damage to any of our trading partners or our allies in Europe. Uh, but sadly, you know, Putin has taken advantage of that and noted that he can probably continue on and we're not willing to go the lengths or to undertake the costs of anything that may have uh, that may offer any pain to our, our allies. Uh, but frankly, you know, the economic costs pale in comparison to what a destabilized Europe will ultimately cost, you know, not only within Europe, but also around the world and to us here at home. As we're already seeing oil prices rise, uh, the stock market beginning to go south. Uh, this will have devastating and long-term impacts if we don't force Putin to back down. Congressman, I know you're on the Foreign Affairs Committee and Homeland Security Committee. I'm curious mm -hmm. what role Congress will have on those committees in this uh, situation, and what do you expect the president to say today when he talks at noon? Well, we certainly hope that the president will finally put out the sanctions that we've been calling for uh, for quite a long time. We put out the NIAC Act uh, that was an effort to really bolster the sanction regime. Uh, and we're also looking at additional sanctions that are being introduced this week against members of the Russian legislature that rubber stamped this invasion. So I hope the president finally recognizes that this is the time for strength, that the moment of diplomacy, the moment that we could be taking half steps and half measures, that that has gone out the window, you know, just as Russia and bombers were flying over in devastating areas all across Ukraine. Now that we have dozens, if not hundreds, of folks on the ground who are killed, you know, before that number grows into the thousands or the tens of thousands, we need to show that we mean business. Congressman, uh, you're, you're part of a bipartisan group of, of lawmakers who sent a letter to Biden urging him to get mm -hmm. a congressional approval before involving U.S. troops in Ukraine. I presume you would not expect uh, Joe Biden to talk about that today, but your, your, your point is... If this were to escalate, this is not a role for U.S. troops. Precisely. And there's a very big difference between the involvement of American soldiers, our sailors, our Marines, and our airmen. There's a very big difference between us becoming militarily involved and us leveraging all the other assets and tools at our disposal. Article 1 of the Constitution gives the power to declare war, the power to send troops into harm's way. That rests in the Congress, and the president cannot do that unilaterally. We sent that letter to remind him of that fact. But we're also reminding him that there are other tools at our disposal to make sure that this wanton aggression does not go unanswered. Congressman, I, I'm seeing some headlines. Apparently, choppers have seized an air base near Kiev. Uh, the Russians have taken a power plant. Uh, let's see, helicopters swoop upon the capital, launches all out invasion from north, south, and east. Uh, cruise missiles hitting the airports, the military bases, the tanks rolling in. Obviously, it's to decapitate this government, install a Putin puppet. That means the current president, uh, he, they're not going to let him stay in power, obviously, because he wants it to be, be a free country, and Putin wants somebody he can control. The big question now is what happens to the president and does he run 
does he stay and fight? Because it sounds like he's going to stay and fight because he's made it very clear. I'm going to arm the people. We're going to, if they, if, you know, if they want Ukraine, they're going to have to get it over my dead body. No, and, and I think we should all be pr keeping President Zelensky in our prayers. Uh, you know, I think what you've stated, just the severity, the enormity of the assault that Russia has perpetrated here, uh, it should not be that difficult. It may be, but it should not be that difficult, given the overwhelming numbers for Russian forces to seize Ukraine. Now, whether they can hold it, whether they can deal with the insurgency that will follow, uh, whether the tens of thousands, over 100,000 troops that they will have to keep there uh, to maintain security, whether that may lead to destabilization back in Russia, those are all the questions that Putin will have to answer. You know, but for now, I think President Zelensky is somebody we should be doing everything in our power to support and to help as they keep fighting against this just egregious invasion and the wanton aggression that we've seen. Amen. Thank you, yes, Congressman. All right, Representative Peter, uh, Meyer, thank, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Appreciate Congressman. It. Thank you.